welcome everybody to another round of World of Tanks subscriber replays. My name, as always, is Maxwell, and today's first video is from the user A Mudbone. That's A Mudbone, and he's driving the T150 on a standard battle on the northwest. T150 being a tier 6 heavy tank for the Russians. So I thought we'd stick sort of around about the mid tiers again for this video. Uh, don't worry, tomorrow's video will probably jump back up to tier 9 and 10 just to showcase some of the higher tier tanks. But I just want to give a bit, uh, a bit screen time to the mid tiers and some of the lower tiers some of the time. So today we're going to be looking at the, uh, the T150 and possibly a tier 8. So straight away, Mudbone going to be heading down to the south of this map. Um, the eagle-eyed among you may notice that there's been a whole new road added to this map. Uh, all the way at the bottom here. There used to just be two levels. There used to be that one road going across the middle at a higher high, uh, elevation to the road that the Wolverines sat at the start of. But now they've added this extra lower road, which has a couple more routes in it. The problem with just the, uh, the way that the map was before is that the enemy team could just camp up in the mountains directly ahead of Mudbone there and they were able just to snipe anybody who came along that road and it really made it a little bit one-sided this uh, this battle here but as it is with the addition of this new road in here it makes it a lot more even spots out of 3001 here 3001 reacts to the news of the T150 a little bit too late there and takes a little bit of free damage so a little bit unfortunate for him hopefully he can reload in time and indeed he can, he picks up kill number one. As you see, the reload on this cannon for a tier six is pretty long, ten and a half seconds, but it does have some pretty nice alpha damage. Uh, so as you can see, able to do some work with that. Finds a Panzer 3-4 that's made short work of his ally there, but he's been able to take him out. Takes some damage from that ELC there. Got to be careful because the ELC, while a light tank, may not look like a threat. It does have a good cannon with decent penetration and rate of fire. And alpha damage. Going to be taking on this TOG 2 now. Again, TOG 2, pretty damn good tank. It's also got a pretty decent cannon, uh, but it has pretty much no armour to speak of. Only thing it has on its side is its vast hit point pool. Able to soak up a grand amount of damage before, uh, before keeling over. So this ELC... Flies around the corner. I don't know what he was expecting. Because he knew for a fact that Mudbone was down here in the T-150. Because he'd seen him and he'd already fired at them. Tog 2 cresting over the ridge there. But definitely not got the gun depression to be able to get a shot on target. And Mudbone just going to plant one in his face. And uh, teach him a lesson there. For not understanding the limitations of his own vehicle. He has to back off now. And hopefully if he backs off a little bit more. Uh, Mudbone may be able to get another shot into him. Indeed he does. A little bit unfortunate with the low roll there. Because that could have been killed number 4. But as it is only did 200 and some damage. So uh, a little bit unfortunate there. But still pretty good shot. Now he's going to have to come up this hill and try and take on this Hellcat. Hellcat's got no armour. But he does have a decent cannon. Unfortunately for the Hellcat. Fires at the total wrong point on the uh, T-150. And just glances off the side armour. Uh, by the time he gets to the top of this hill, should have his cannon reloaded, and it should just be a case of planting another one on the Hellcat, and that is kill number four. So as you see, the T-150, not the most speedy or agile of creatures. It is more of a slow lumbering beast that's just going to uh, slowly in and inexorably make its way to its destination, and uh, it'll be damned if anybody's going to get in its way. As you can see, the Allied team kind of just totally overrunning the enemy here. They've committed far too many forces to the very northern edge of the map. And uh, not enough forces in the south and in the centre. And the Allies have just been able to overrun them. And then it's going to be a case of just getting in behind the guys in the north. And just uh, flanking them and hemming them in. And then it's going to be a case of just taking them out. So Mudbone finally gets to the top of this hill here. And has now got to try and find out the guys who are camping. There's no artillery. So... He's got a couple of Hellcats here, actually, that haven't been spotted. Because you've got those uh, Chi Nu and Chi To in the north there. But looks like one of them is at least making his way back. So there's one of the Hellcats there. Camping in and around the base. Although Mudbone should be able to pick up the kill on this Chi Nu. Indeed he can, and that's kill number 5. And almost 3,000 points of damage so far. Takes a hit in the side from that M6. 
Gonna be feeling a little bit uh, sour about that, considering the M6 is uh, beset on all sides and he chooses to shoot at Mudborn in his T150 instead of somebody else. Gonna see if he can get one last shot on this Hellcat. Not quite! Hellcat just getting behind the house in time. A little bit of a shame that he rushed his shot on the left-hand side of the house, because if he'd aimed at the right-hand side, the Hellcat did indeed carry on driving. Not that he was to know that at the time. So, just trying to get his shot off as quick as possible. For all he knew, the Hellcat could have just stopped behind that house and waited, and then uh, his aiming on the right-hand side would have been for nothing. So, these two Hellcats looking like camping didn't work originally, so what they're going to do to make up for that is camp even harder and just hide at the very, very extremities of the map behind these buildings and this rubble pile here. Because if camping didn't work originally, then obviously camping harder is the answer. Takes a hit from this Hellcat, not able to get any damage in return. So, uh, not going to rely on his armour and just going to drop back a little bit and wait for his allies to arrive. And then, uh, then going to try and push these Hellcats down. Just wait for him to pop out. One good shot, and that is kill number six. And a well-deserved Top Gun medal for A. Mudborn here. So there's just one Hellcat left, and as you can see, the Allied team just swarming in. And that is GG and the game. So absolutely awesome replay there from A. Mudborn driving his T-150 straight along that bottom road and just letting nothing stand in his way. So stick around, because as always, another game and the score screens are coming right up. And our second replay of the day is from the user Overlord98. That's Overlord98 and he's driving the Pershing on a standard battle on the Mountain Pass. Pershing being a T8 medium tank for the Americans. The one straight after the T20. Um, sorry, I was just distracted uh, by... The comment in the uh, in the chat there, and I kind of lost my train of thought, and then just kind of derped out a little bit. Uh, so yeah, this thing follows on from the T20. In my opinion, not as good or all round as the T20. I find it a little bit difficult to get used to it. Um, very much styled after the T32, and uh, again, T32, I never found quite as good tier for tier as the T29 is. But that may just be me. I may just have a soft spot for tier 7s. So anyway, Overlord going to be heading to the centre of the map straight away. Has a cheeky shot at the VK across the way there. Finds an A20. Finds an A20 here. The A20 did put a tiny bit of damage into his side. But uh, not really going to be able to achieve too much because he's got a terrible, terrible cannon on that A20. So Overlord not going to give a damn about the enemy team here. I'm just going to push straight up the other side of the uh, the little valley here. And, uh, he's going to get some good proximity spots on everybody. As you see, finds this T-71 here. Puts a good bit of damage on him. Does have to be careful though because the T-71 does have a good cannon with that auto loader and he's able to do a decent amount of damage. But it looks like the M445 has taken him out. Done the last bit of damage on him. Just spotted out a couple of tank destroyers here, camped up on the mountainside. Got to be careful here. This SU-152 just bounces on the front. Probably on the gun mantlet there of the Pershing of Overlord. So just going to try and lure him into having another shot, which indeed he does. Hopefully his allies can lay some damage onto him at some point. You can see there's quite a few tanks um, for the allies sort of arrayed across the way there. But it looks like the enemy team is actually pushing quite hard across the bridge. And there's actually nobody there to stop them. <coughs> Excuse me. The only thing stopping them at the moment is their own fear and uncertainty. Well, actually, it looks like the guys in D8 probably got something to say about that. Gets a nice shot on that SU-152 there. Just going to wait again. Going to try and lure him into firing. 
and either missing or hitting the gun mantlet and not doing any damage. But it looks like he's just decided that uh, camped up on the ridge there isn't the best place to be. So he just decides to back off, not too sure where he's going to go, whether he's just going to run away or whether he's going to come around and try and fight. So he's got a few tanks on this right-hand side here. Looks like that's a Tiger II and a T-43. Got to be careful here because a Tiger II may make short work of this Pershing, especially if he's able to bounce any of the shots. The uh, nice angled front plate of the Tiger II could prove to be quite formidable. Although, to be honest, it looks like he hasn't got that fully upgraded turret with only having 1,500 hit points. So it's just going to be a case of putting shot after shot through the flat part of the non-upgraded turret of the Tiger 2 here. And that's going to be kill number one now for Overlord. So still holding the guys off on the bridge for the time being. T-43 still over on that right-hand side. Manages to bounce that shot. And the SU-152 appears in front there. And he hasn't really got any support from his allies from across the uh, from across the valley there. So he's going to have to be careful. These allies have decided to move off to different locations. As you can see, the Jag Panther and uh, a different medium tank there. Which one is that? Still no idea. T-43, I think. They're still they're now moving and trying to assault the guys on the bridge from below and maybe try and help out at C7 as well. This SU still in the area. Both of them having a shot and both of them missing there. It's a little bit unfortunate, but I'm pretty sure this Pershing is going to be able to reload before the SU-152, who is moving off to try and have a shot at the guys from the north by the looks of it. And... Uh, Overlord able to sneak a shot into his underplate. Not quite got the gun depression there, so he's going to have to try and get up a little bit higher. Looks like his ally in the Jag Panthers come to join him here, but he's able to turn aside a few shots from this SU. Does finally take one in the face, but it's not going to do too much damage. Got to be careful, this T-43 here was going to move off, but then realised the T-43 is still in this location. But he's just going to... Well, he was thinking about leaving him to the Jag Panther there, but the Jag Panther... May not be able to take him out by himself. Well, indeed he is. So now he's going to head to the far left-hand flank to try and assist his allies with his IS-6. All they have in that area is the T-34-3 and that IS. And this IS-6, if he plays it smart, would easily be able to turn both of these guys aside. But uh, Overlord coming in to try and offer some support. Gets a good hit through his side armour, but the IS-6 is able to get one in return. And Overlord going to have to try and use his speed and agility to stop this IS-6 getting a shot on him. Gets another good bit of damage here. Uh, just got to wait for his cannon to reload. One more through the back of the turret, and that is kill number three, and almost 3,000 points of damage. And that just leaves an IS-3 and a Panther out stranded on that bridge. And as the Allied team close in around them and just try and move in to finish these guys off. Although as he gets into this location, I think uh, Overlord just realises that he hasn't got the hit points that he thinks he's got. Only got 164 health remaining. So he's going to have to be careful here because this IS-3 is a bit of a bouncy beast. Well, he's only got 570 hit points, but again, just one shot's going to be enough to finish off Overlord in his M26 Pershing here. But uh, gets a good hit through the front of the IS-3 and then that AMX is able to finish him off. And that just leaves this Panther out stranded on the bridge. He's got nowhere to go and he's got no protection from either side. He's got that AMX on the right hand side and these two medium tanks on the left hand side. Although he does have a good chunk of hit points. It doesn't really matter as Overlord's able to get one through his lower plate. Really, if this Panther plays it carefully, he could take out the T-43, the Pershing, and that AMX. But as it is, it looks like the Allied team just content to win by capping. And that is GG and the victory. So an absolutely awesome replay there from Overlord98, scoring three and a bit thousand points of damage, three kills, and just really pushing the enemy team and keeping them on the back foot for the majority of that battle. So absolutely awesome replay from you. Thank you very much for sending that one in. Don't forget, guys, if you've got yourself a good replay, then please send that to replay at screenreality.com. Link for that is in the description. Leave me a like or favourite, sit comment in the comment section below, let me know exactly what you thought. And if you're not already, then please consider hitting that subscribe button for more content like this in the future. I've been Maxwell, this has been World of Tanks, and I will catch you guys next time.